Are you ready, teachers? Yeah. Okay. Let's go. So John Hattie developed 10 mind frames that he feels creates the best teachers. And he did this because um, he found that oftentimes people were looking at the top of the list and just trying to focus on those very top strategies. And they were really missing some good stuff in the strategies that ranked lower, but were still very good strategies. And um, also he found that teachers had some trouble looking into the research to kind of see how do I make this happen? How do I, you know, mimic that strategy? And so he came up with the 10 mind frames. So let's go through these. First of all, as a teacher, you need to be thinking, I need to evaluate the impact of my teaching on my students' learning. So this means you're constantly asking yourself, are the kids listening? Are they engaged? Are they curious? Are they doing their homework? Are they using their study hall? Are they doing well on their quizzes? You're constantly looking at that. The success and failure of my students is about what I do or don't do. It's so easy to place blame on some external force. For example, well, my students come from a bad home. My students don't show up with pencils. My students have never been taught how to behave. My students can't do labs because they just don't get the safety skills and they just won't follow the rules. There's lots of excuses we can make about why things aren't working and why kids aren't being successful. But really, you need to start thinking about how can you change that? How can you influence things for the better? Because you can. Now, it does take a lot of effort. You got that right. It takes a lot of effort. But you, you can change the outcome for any student despite the baggage they're bringing with them. So you're thinking about the success and failure of my students. It really is about me. It really is. It's about what I'm doing or not doing. Talk more about learning than teaching. Well, this one's kind of difficult to think about because obviously we're thinking about teaching and how we're teaching so that we can produce better learning. But what this means is think about instead of how will I teach this lesson, how will my students learn this, this standard? And when you kind of change that direction, you kind of start seeing it through the student's eyes a little bit differently. So what's the best way to learn something instead of the best way to teach something? Assessment is about my impact. So typically kids take an assessment and it's really there for them to know, hey, either you learned it or you didn't, right? So either you're paying attention or you weren't. And that's, that's your problem. The test is over. We're moving on. You should be looking at assessments and thinking about, were you effective? Did you teach the standards? Did you teach the skills? And how can you improve that? So if you're not, if something's lacking, how can you do better? So you're thinking of assessments. When you're looking at them scores, you're thinking not about the students, but about yourself and your impact. I teach through dialogue, not monologue. And what this means is that the students are talking. Basically, that, that's what that means. You are not the only one talking. Students are talking to you. They're talking to each other. Talking and discussing and uh, that conversation piece in a classroom is so important. Now, it is difficult to manage. So I, I can totally relate to that. It's, it's hard to manage kids all talking and keeping them on track, you know, so they're not talking about things they're not supposed to be talking about. But it is so important. So it's really worth the effort to figure out how you can make that happen in your classroom. I enjoy the challenge and I never retreat to, to doing my best. Meaning uh, you want to be challenged. You realize there's a problem. And even though you think I'm doing my best and, and the problem is still there, you don't give up. And you say, you know what? I was doing my best. I'm going to figure out how to do better. It's my role to develop positive relationships in class and staff rooms. 
So if you've got negativity going on and you've got teachers that are, you know, that they're burning out and they're feeling despair and they're stressed out, that you're trying to be the light in the darkness. So you, it's your job to stay positive for yourself, for your students, for your colleagues. I inform all about the language of learning. So you are just always focused on that learning and that language of learning. So you're talking to parents about learning goals. You're talking to students. You're talking to other teachers. You're talking to your children. You're talking about learning and really the fun of learning. That's how I think of that, the language of learning. I realize that learning is hard work. So you need to realize that for yourself. Even when you're learning things, it's okay. It's going to be hard. It does take effort. That's why a lot of people don't want to change because they don't want to put forth that effort. So you recognize it's hard work, but also it helps you to relate to your students. Sometimes things that seem simple to us, you know, of course, they're not simple to kids and they get frustrated. Maybe they act out and it, it kind of, you know, it like gets us right here. It's like, mm, why do you got to be a jerk? You need to relate to the fact that it's hard work and it does cause frustration and kids are trying to do their best. And finally, I collaborate. So I work with others. I, you know, I am having dialogue as well with my, uh, with my colleagues so that we can share the very best ideas and form those positive relationships. So those are his 10 mind frames. Now we're going to look at some of the very top ranking strategies and you're going to kind of see how it really it falls into these 10 mind frames.